Get let's take a moment and say thank you to our sponsors at Fuji Sport. Yeah, absolutely. They've been working with us for, for a very long time, not only on this podcast, but also at the Academy. Um, and I'm peeking, taking a peek at, at their website right now, and they have a brand new ultra light gi. Now, this is mind blowing. I'm looking at my size A2 is 2.75 pounds. I mean, that's under three pounds. That's, yeah. that's mind blowing. I could even lift that. And uh, go to their website, fujisports.com. Check it out. Anything you could need for your jujitsu journey, you can find at fujisports.com. Hey, it's been a while since we started Roll TV Project. Uh, it's been a while since you started it. I did come in later, and um, I can't say enough about it, especially the new platform. It's really amazing, fully customizable, uh, and you know a little bit more about the structure. Well, so two things you need to know. One is the subscription service, which is 9 bucks a month. Um, you can get access to hundreds of videos, hundreds of drills, techniques, and so on, in a very nice labor, library categorized as you need them. But two different lessons. Um, you can actually purchase those individually, and you own them, so the subscription is not tied to it at all. You can look at things like spider guard, half guard sweeps, half guard chokes, um, uh, folding pass, and so on. There are so many of them out there. So take a look um, and see where you need help with the videos, right? 30%. If you type in Roll Radio as a code, who doesn't like saving money, go to RollAcademy.tv. What's up, everyone, and welcome back. If you haven't already, please remember to hit the like, share, subscribe, download, listen, and whatever other button there is, and leave us a review wherever you do listen. That ensures that we can continue bringing you the great guests and amazing content that you have come to expect. This week's guest might be one of the most recognizable people in jiu-jitsu. After a stellar competition career, he became an entrepreneur, creating the most popular resource for jiu-jitsu instructionals. On this episode, we are fortunate enough to have Bernardo Faria join us to discuss his jiu-jitsu journey, the impact his family and positive role models have had in his life, how he created and grew BJJ Fanatics, and a ton more. Here is the Roll Radio with multi-time world champion, IBJJF Hall of Famer, co-creator of BJJ Fanatics, and one of the nicest guys in jiu-jitsu, Bernardo Faria. Welcome to Raw Radio. And we are live. Yes. Hey, listen, this is going to be fun. It right? is going to be fun. So you mentioned something before we start recording, uh -huh. right? You mentioned something that the guest today yes. was one of on your top... Not one of. Oh, not one of? No, not one it of. Was it was the top? Yes, the top guest Why? that I wanted. Why? Why? Because uh, I think that, um, wow, we're really loud. I think that uh, he is, since I've been doing this for yeah. five years or so, uh, probably the biggest and the best um, ambassador for the sport, in my opinion. Yeah. And um, so as we started doing this, and you meet different personalities, and you research people, Yeah. some of them you're like, you know, outside of this I'm probably not going to be that person's uh, best friend <laughs> or want to hang out even. But um, getting to know today's guest uh, over these years of being involved in jiu-jitsu, it's always positive. It's always um, something enthusiastic. He always has a smile on his face. Yeah. Uh, I, see, I think I saw two pictures uh, <laughs> where he's not, at least when he's not competing, where he didn't have a smile on his face. So I am super stoked about today. Bernardo, welcome to the show. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. And thanks, Gary. I appreciate you guys inviting and I appreciate the introduction as well. Oh, like, uh, yeah, that was cool. I got to uh, get... I, I ask you right off the bat. You are smiling all the time. He's not even kidding. No. And you know what's interesting <laughs> about this? That before I flew out to 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 um, to um, to Boston to to meet you and 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 when we were recording, you know, I always thought, you know, it, it, is your personality like this in person or is it part of this this persona that we always create as instructors as leaders and so on and i, I was just surprised because you you were just smiling all the time you were joking you were having fun yeah, no i think like I, i'm a human being right so i have my sad moments as well and uh, and i think like if you were around me 24 hours per day i don't know if i'm 24 hours per day smiling <laughs> but i think like when, especially when you meet your friends or when you're doing something that you like and uh, when you I mean, like, there's a guy in Brazil that he says that uh, sadness doesn't pay bills. 
So you better be happy, you know, like that's the only choice you have is be happy. So I try, I really try to be a happy person, you know, like I think we, we live once and, uh, and uh, I mean, like you can choose if you're going to wake up happy or if you're going to wake up complaining and, uh, and uh, having a tough time. And uh, so I, even when I'm having a hard time, I try to, to tell myself that I woke up, I'm alive. So. <laughs> we're here so let's let's try to be happy at least you know like and, uh, and so i'm a happy person i can tell you that that's fantastic well, that, that's fantastic i love it and especially in jujitsu i think sometimes it's, it's difficult to be smiling all the time especially when we smash getting smashed not necessarily smashing but getting smashed right like i think in jujitsu in general uh well let me ask you do you think jujitsu is easy do you think jujitsu is all you know rainbows and and unicorns and and, and all smiles all the time not at all. Like uh, when you're getting smashed, someone is mounted on you, trying to <laughs> choke you, or the guy's on your back, or you're getting you. Know what I mean, like it's a, it's a it's a tough sport. Like uh, I think for all the combative sports, it's probably the less tougher, right? Like it's jujitsu is more gentle than wrestling, than judo, than boxing, than kickboxing. But it is a tough sport, and it's hard to be uh smiling all the time but i think you can see my footage and when i was competing for example i was not smiling (laughs) (laughs) and when i'm training like hard i'm not smiling either but i think like if you were if if you if you were in a situation that you 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 can just like uh, be happy and and smile and and that it's better than close your face and uh, just be in a bad mood you know like so that's kind of how i try to approach life what do you what do you think is so satisfying about jujitsu? Often we, we we get to the academy, we work hard, and sometimes it's just you know we get smashed. And but but yet most of the time, most of the students leave with a smile on their face. There is a point of satisfaction, and, and we can keep coming back, and we want to do more and more and more. What do you think is so satisfying about it? Yeah, I think. It's it's I think it's a lot of things in the same time. One, there is the fitness aspect of it, right? Like uh, sometimes I don't train jujitsu, but I go for a run or I go lift weight. And after the fact, sometimes I don't even want to go. You know, like I go lifting and I was like, ah, what I'm doing? And then right after, I feel good. So th- there is this fitness. Uh, I don't know how to use the terms of the the the, but anyways, the I think there is this fitness aspect of it, like uh, uh, putting the endorphin out and isn't that and i think jiu-jitsu is very like community based right like so you're going to a place that you are meeting a ton of friends and they, they, they literally become your friends because you're you're holding each other for like 30 minutes and uh, and then you're talking and this and that so i think it, the fact that you have that community and, and it's like many times like 40 people in a small room sometimes right so you you're so close to each other that I, I think you all become friends, and uh, and uh, and I think like also the jujitsu is like a chess, right? So you're constantly thinking and solving problems. So you 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 have that sense of like uh, I got a job done, you know, like I, I was able to solve this problem, and then you also get that sense of like how I'm gonna fix this. So you're constantly thinking about that, and. Uh, so I think putting all of these things together makes jiu-jitsu become what it is. And, the, and it's fascinating to see how much it's growing and how much it's going to grow. You know? like when I look back 20 years when I started in 2001, when I look back 10 years ago, and when I try to forecast the next 10 years, it's incredible. You know? like it's, it's, it's more jiu-jitsu schools, it's more practitioners, is the sport becoming more professional? It's like, uh, I heard someone saying the other day in one conference that it's becoming the new golf, but a way more efficient golf because golf, like you leave your house Saturday for seven hours and then you come back, your wife want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you just have to leave for one hour. You know, you go there one hour, that's enough. You don't want to do more than one or two hours. You know? like, so it's a very efficient sport dash like community and the and the you make friends and the, i think it's a very efficient activity you know yeah. and that's why more and more and more and more people are joining 
do, do you think that at some point jiu-jitsu will become so mainstream as golf is or some of the other sports where it's going to be you know virtually everywhere i mean it's already everywhere but uh, you know what i mean it's going to be so popular and so accessible as some yeah. of the other sports yeah I, i don't know if it's going to become like soccer or basketball or but i do believe that could become like tennis would become golf you mentioned a good one like i i don't follow golf i don't know the, the players but a lot of people do so you see like i don't follow but a lot of people do but you know soccer and basketball even if you don't follow you kind of know who everybody is just because it's so popular that so i i think like i, I don't see it becoming like soccer or basketball or even football but uh, i think it could become like one of those like uh could become like what nba is maybe would become what golf is or what tennis ball is or and uh, like formula one is you know like so uh, i believe that but we need more practitioners we need more practitioners because even i know a lot of people that they have done jiu-jitsu for one or two years they stop it but they still follow they know who mm -hmm. everybody is they watch the tournaments so i think more people stepping the door you know and the and the But this is a fascinating sport. And I think even if life gets on your way and you stop doing for some reason, you still kind of love jiu-jitsu. You know? like, it was a good experience those months or those years that you did jiu-jitsu. So we need more people stepping in the door. You know? Well, and also we make the friend. We make friends. We make these relationships. Even if you stop training, you often keep in touch. And sometimes these individuals return and, and you, yeah. know, you hang out and so on. So organically, it just continues continues growing what do you think we need no. to do for jiu-jitsu to become better i think it's a it's a community work like i think all the jiu-jitsu schools uh, as i believe you do over there thomas but I did, when i talk with you over here in boston I, i got a sense that you run a very successful school so i think we need a little bit less of those old jiu-jitsu schools you know like that it, You step on the mat and the purple belt wants to kill in the first day and then you never come back and you have a horrible experience. Yeah. And yeah. we need more of those professional schools that have a good schedule, that you go to the beginner's class, that instructor is very friendly, that uh, the, all the other students trains there like to improve, not to kill each other and that kind of stuff. You know, like, do you agree? Oh, I, I, I think so. I mean, more, more accessible jiu-jitsu is for average person. Not for the, yeah. you know, somebody said a long time ago, and I don't remember who it was, but somebody, somebody told me is not everybody will be a world champion. And that's really important to remember. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. there's handful, there's few who will, but yeah. most won't. And unfortunately, yeah. academies only exist because of these people who don't become world champions. Right? Yeah. These yeah. And I think, yeah, and you can even extend this. Like, not everybody is going to become world champion or in any age or in any belt. Right. Uh, not even thinking only about the adult division, like making a world champion master three purple belt middleweight is really hard. That should not be the goal. Like, uh, and, uh, not everybody has the talent to become that. So, yeah, or even yeah. going down in age. Like, some of these teenagers that I watch these days is like, oh, Lord, geez, like they would mop the floor with me, they would destroy me. I mean, the, 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 yeah. I mean just phenomenal jujitsu, and they are just 14. <laughs> that's, yeah. That scares yeah. me. <laughs> No, did you, I, I agree with one million percent. And, did you uh, did yeah. you develop that after joining Alliance? That philosophy of making it more accessible for everyone, and it wasn't about uh, dominating or or like weeding out the people that that weren't going to be tough competitors. Yeah, my first instructor, uh, Ricardo Ricardo Marx, the one who gave me all my belts. Mm -hmm. it, it, the very first day I joined the school, I got that environment on that place. You know, oh, great. On that school. And uh, my, my instructor, he was the type of person that he loved the competition scene. But he understood very early on that most of the students are not competitors. So you, you can't push them that hard. You know? They should be there to enjoy the time of being there. And whoever wants to push hard goes to this group over here. You know? It's the same training, but they're treated a little different. You're going to push those guys a little harder. So, and then I also saw that with the Alliance with Fabio, Fabio is very, very hard on it. Like uh, he, th that's how he thinks. Like Jiu Jitsu should be for everyone. Uh, even though he owns the best Jiu Jitsu team on the planet by, by teams, like by, by winning the titles and that, he always talks about like how it's, 
99% of the students are not those guys. You know? So don't focus on these guys over here. You know? So, yeah, so it was a mix of like seeing in my hometown from my first instructor, seeing from Fabio, and also like traveling for seminars and watching the community and that kind of stuff. You, you talk about your first instructor. Do you remember your very first day on the mat when you stepped on? I do. I do. And, uh, and I do because, because this, because I almost didn't start here. Oh, tell, 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 us, tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us how they happen. Yeah. So I had a, a friend who was my brother's friend and he's three years older than me. And he was a very small guy. He was like a life fighter. Probably, if you put that in your perspective. So he was probably like 100. I don't even know what's the life fighter, 140 pounds, something like that, 130. And the, uh, my brother's friends used to come to my house to play video game and that kind of stuff. And then at the end of the day, they would end up grappling the carpet, you know, like, and nobody knew anything. And at that time I was like 13 years old. They were like 16, you know, like 15, 16. And nobody knew anything about anything. And then there was always this small guy who beat everybody, you know, <laughs> always happens like, that way. <laughs> I was like, what, what is he doing? You know, like, and that was Jiu-Jitsu, you know, like, so he was blue belt in Jiu-Jitsu. And, uh, and then, it, it, he started pitching me the idea like oh if you like this why don't you start doing jiu-jitsu and, that? and i was like yeah man that sounds good and i was 14 years old but where should i train and then he was like listen uh, i train this place and it's the best place in the city and i was lifting weights i started lifting when i was like 13 14 in one gym that was wasn't here but was was a little far and and that gym had jiu-jitsu and in my mind, like jujitsu is jujitsu, you know, like, you go, you're gonna learn jujitsu anywhere. There's no difference, you know. Like, so I told him, I was like, man, I love the idea. I'm gonna start, but I'm gonna train jujitsu where I lift weights because it's gonna be easier for me, you know. Like, and I just I can just finish lifting and and go train. And he told me, he was like, if I were you, I would start over there, but do whatever you want. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want. And so I did that, and and then the very first day. I didn't even train. I just went there to get information and that. The, the instructor came with like a mad face. <laughs> uh, what do you want, kid? I was like, oh, I'm thinking about starting jiu-jitsu here. Oh, this is the schedule. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> this, this jiu-jitsu thing might be like crazy. You know? like, dude, these guys are kind of like arrogant. And should I really do this? But then I, I gave myself a second chance. You know, like, I was like, well, let me go to that place that my friend told me. But I could easily have gave up over there because I was like, should I really do this? And then I went to this other place and there was my instructor who gave me all the belts. And he came laughing very first day. He was like, and he, he has a big sheet. So he came like, dude, hey, how are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm doing great. And then it was like, and it was me and one friend that was much smaller than me, but we were both the same age. So he asked it like, uh, so what do you want? I was like, oh, I would love to start jiu-jitsu. Like, oh, great. And I was like, what's the schedule? And then he looked at me and he was like, the schedule? Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 5 p.m. I was like, Is, do you have a schedule? And then I was like, yes. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 5 p.m. And the class is going to be you? And you. So he was just starting the juvenile class. With me and my friend. That was literally like his first, like, like not juvenile, like the 14 to 16. Uh -huh. and, then, and I was like, okay, I do it. You know, like, let's, let's do it. And then we started. And then one week later, there was like four kids, two weeks later, eight kids. And so it was a much more friendly environment than the first place that I went. And uh, and I'm glad I gave myself this second chance, you know, like because I thought about like should I really do this? Like these guys is, doesn't seem like a good sport. Like so, yeah. where do you think you would be if you didn't give yourself a second chance? What do you think your life would yeah. look like? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I I would do what everybody did in my home. I I grew up like on a medium class, like uh, I was not. Uh, my family was like a medium type of class. And on my family, on my family, there was, I used to joke that there was only like three types of jobs, right? There was, uh, uh, there's something like making your mind here. Let me close this. Okay. So in my family, there was only like a three type of jobs, right? You, you either become a doctor or you become an engineer or you become a lawyer. There's no other choice. Like, these That's are it. the three things that, 
very like traditional medium class type of thinking, right? Like uh, you're gonna get a job, nine to five, and the uh, and the uh, and you're gonna do well in life, and the uh, and, and you're gonna pay your bills and blah blah blah. So I would I, I did college first for civil engineer, and and I I, I passed in the exam and I was selected, blah blah blah. Uh, and the but then when I saw the schedule, I was like, ah, it was class from eight a.m. to five p.m. one after the other. And then I decided to do business because the class was like 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. So like, I can conciliate that if you should. Know. I can do both. <laughs> and my and my dad obligated me to do college. You know? He was like, if you want to do this jujitsu thing, you also gotta do college. So, anyways, answering your question, I think I would become like either an engineering or. Uh, is that where yeah. is that the direction that your life was going towards when you were you know you're in your later teens or you you become a young man is 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 that the direction or or do you have in the back of your mind that this jujitsu thing could actually turn into you know something that you're gonna do for a living? Yeah. So when I when I was a kid, math was always my favorite subject. I love the numbers, and I would do all the calculations in my head about the little money that my my grandma would give me in the birthday. And <laughs> I, 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 math was always my, my my. So I think I would do something related to that if it was not jujitsu. But as soon as I started jujitsu, uh, right away, like six months later, I was like, man, I want to compete, and I want to get good at this. And then one year later. I was competing in Brazilian nationals as a yellow belt. I was like, man, I'm becoming a little professional in this thing. You're like competing in Brazilian nationals. And, the, and then one year later, I got second in the Brazilian nationals as a blue belt. And, and then I started envisioning that, you know, like, man, I can, I can do this for a living. You know, like I can become professional. And that was the, the toughest fight I had in life, you know, was to prove to my family that that thing could work. And uh, my dad was completely against. I, I heard him, he told me a bunch of stuff that I think he would never tell me. I, you, I hear a lot of shit, you know. Like, and I love my dad more than, than than anything. And I don't blame him, you know. Like it was a risk thing to do. And uh, but that ended up working as a motivator factor for me as well, you know, because I always had that fear that this has to work out. I have no second chance, you know. Like, I gave up everything of my life to do this. Well, so, it, and as parents, we, we have this protective, you know, behavior towards our kids. We want them to be safe. We want them to succeed. We want them to create a good life for themselves. So I completely understand because my dad was the same way. Like my dad did not see me do jujitsu until I was a black belt. That was the first time that he saw me. And, and yeah. you know, it's like he was very, he's like, what are you doing this nonsense for and all the other stuff? You know, like I, I so I completely understand what you're saying. What was what was the conversation with your father like when you decided that this is actually going to be serious? Like this it, is actually going to go down. Like, <laughs> I don't know, it was it was horrible. horrible. Like when I was sixteen, seven in Brazil, when you were like, which is completely wrong. Like in Brazil, when you were like sixteen, seventeen, you got to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Pretty much, like you got to pick the college and the subject that you're going to study. So it's not like here in America, for example, I think if you're, if you're going to become a doctor, first you do medical school. Right? And then from medical school, you can go to doctor, to this, to that. Well, there is a bunch of options, right? In Brazil, no, you're going to choose like 17 years old, you're going to choose like, I'm going to become a civil engineer. Not engineering, like civil engineer or electrical. And you have no clue about your life when you're 17. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's unbelievable. So, so, so when I pitched this idea that I would do jiu-jitsu, my dad completely freaked out. You know, he was like, "That's unbelievable! You're gonna be the broke one in the family. You're not gonna be able to pay your bills. You're gonna regret. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. This is you're gonna get hurt. This this thing is not even a sport. I heard everything you can possibly imagine, and the uh, and uh, and the uh, like. Uh, I remember one day you scream like. Uh, this is not going to give you even a t-shirt. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and today we joke about it. You know, and, and, he, and he tells, he assumes, you know, like, I was wrong. Like, and, and he's a human. He does mistakes as I do as well. So I don't blame him. You know, like, and, uh, 
and the uh, but it was a tough time. It was a, a very <laughs> tough time yeah. because like I didn't even have an age yet to like. So, but anyways, I I decided that uh, that I would do this. I I also did a little bit of what he wanted because at some point he gave up as well. He was like, "So do whatever the hell you want, but you gotta do college. You have no choice. You have to do college." And at that time, I. Uh, I already wanted to go to Sao Paulo, go to Rio de Janeiro, go to a bigger place. And he didn't allow me to. You got to do college. So then what I did, I did this easier college that was business, was class from 7.30 or so to 11 a.m. And as soon as I finished the college, then he started, he started, so I won the words Purple Belt Open class. I got home and he didn't even know that I competed that week. I had to explain to him that I won the words. And he was like, words? Words of what? Like, <laughs> So then in 2007, I got, I got a pen sides. A pen, how do I say that in pen English? Sides, pen sides, sides, yeah. Yeah. And I got a very bad complication that the doctor said that for one or two days, I didn't, didn't pass away. So Because I had to do the surgery twice. So I had to stay in the hospital like almost like two or three weeks. And my dad saw how depressed I was that I was not training. And I was literally like in close to depression. So after that week, he started, started clicking in his mind, you know, like, okay, that's what he wants to do. You know? Now he's getting into depression. You know, like I was really, really, really sad. Like in, so in what, the hospital, so, so you what don't want to see anybody. What happened after that day? So you 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 get out of the hospital. You 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 recovering. What, what is the difference in the in the relationship yeah, between so, you and your father? Yeah, so that was 2007, and I was brown belt, and it was two years left to finish the college. So now the conversation started getting better. He was like, "Okay, so where do you want to go after the college? Like to pursue or thing." And then I spent two months in the U.S. When I, I recovered from this, I had three months to f- prepare for the words. I got second in the words. And then I came to Massachusetts Cleanness to help Gabriel Gonzaga to, to train for his UFC match. Mm-hmm. His manager invited me. And, uh, and, uh, and, and then I started showing my dad, like, listen, there are people making a living in the U.S. doing this. Uh, there is a guy in Sao Paulo as well called Fabio Gurgel who have a very good living doing this. I start showing him all the options, you know, and, the, and, the, and he started listening. So then when I finished my college, he asked me, what do you want to do? And then I was like, I want to go to America right away. But this offer that I got from the Gonzaga's manager was bad. It was 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 not a great offer, you know. And the, mm-hmm. and then my dad was like, "Let's do something. Don't go to US. Go to São Paulo. You're still in Brazil. Train under Fabio, and I help you out for one year. Like for one year, I pay your food, and you get a roommate. Get a bunch of roommates in one apartment. And I pay your room. After that one year, you want a big city? You can figure it out." So he did that. So I got my dad's sponsorship for one year <laughs> for food and pay my room in the apartment. And then I trained crazy hard and I did every single thing that Fabio told me to do. And, uh, and, and I, I'm proud to say this, like I was probably the most honest student that he ever had in his life because also at that time, Alliance was charging like, a fee if you win the tournament, a fee if you teach seminars, a fee you, and then you don't pay the, the membership. That was kind of the deal. And I paid him every single penny of everything I did. So, so very quick, Fabio started sending me to seminars all over the world, you know, like, and the, I was winning tournaments and I was paying every single penny of everything I had to pay. And then he put me in the list, you know, like of who goes teach the seminars and this and that. So then after one year, I was paying my bills and uh, I didn't need my, my dad help anymore. And, uh, and, and that was a big relief. And then things only got better from there. Like 2010, I won the world as a black belt. 2011, I got second in the open class. And, uh, and then everything started. 
Your father has to be proud right now. Like as as, as oh, everything is, uh, everything you have accomplished in your life on the mat, off the mat, business wise, you know, running the academy, being a leader, and the impact that you're making around the world. There has to be a a, a satisfaction on both of your sides. Yeah, no. Now he's my biggest fan, and uh, <laughs> and I love him. I literally I call I call him or my they're married, but I talk with them every single day. I call them every day. Like, uh, and I always talk with them, and we, we have a great relationship. And I don't blame them, you know. Like, and we are all humans, you know. Like, we all do mistakes, and yeah. and then he 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 said, like, man, that was a mistake. And I learned a lesson. And if I had another kid, I would tell him to do whatever he feels passion for. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm gonna do with my daughter. You know, what's her passion? Go yeah. for it, because life is short, but it's long. You know, like, yeah. if you're gonna live 80 years old, you're gonna work on something for 50. You better enjoy what you're doing. You know, like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It seems it seems to me like throughout your entire life you've had very strong positive role models, male role models. And do you think yep. that, you know, what we were talking about in the introduction, do you think that's that's made you the the leader you are today? I think for sure, like uh because uh my dad was the type of person who would leave the house like seven thirty AM and come back seven thirty PM, you know, like every single day. And he was an electrical engineering engineer. So he would work really hard every single day to provide to our family we had three kids so my mom was kind of like just supporting us and my mom was that type of person that her day was like drive my brother here pick up him there drive me here drive me there drive me. she was unstoppable like from the time she would wake up until she would go to sleep doing something for us you know uh -huh. But uh, literally, honestly, she lived her life for the three kids that she had. You know? So that's all very inspiring. And uh, I, I, I now I, I even tell my partners I hate wasting time. Like every every day I wake up, I gotta be doing something either productive or I gotta be like around people that I love. You know, like mm -hmm. my wife, my daughter, and. Uh, I, I sometimes I, I go to, today for example I went to the school and I didn't even train just to 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 see the students I like them, and so I'm either working or doing something with someone that I like. You know, the, so you said that you definitely had strong role models in your life. If you had to think about one thing that you learned from your father or um, you know some of the other leaders, um, like Fabio. Fabio. What what would it be? Yeah. What would be the one thing? Like just just about you got to pin one. There's not many of them. What what would be the yeah, best? So, the, yeah, no, very interesting question. And the, between my mom and my dad, my first instructor, and Fabio, I think the thing that they all have in common is work ethic. And the, I think that's the the main thing, to be honest. Like because Fabio is like very very like a, what we agreed we're gonna do. And the, and the, he, he only tries to do the right things, and the, and he's in business, like so he makes deals. You know, and the, whoever agrees with the deals, that that's the agreement. My mom, like she was this person who would live her life for us, and the, a big, uh, like a sacrifice everything on her personal life for the three kids she has. My dad with his job, and my first instructor as well was the most honest, like, do the right thing person that I ever saw in my life. <laughs> and the, so, so between those four people, work ethic, I think it, it's... And well, then I went to work to Marcelo, which became like a mm -hmm. role model for me as well. Was kind of like my mentor, my instructor as well. And it's the same thing. If you see like the, why Marcelo became Marcelo, because his discipline, his work ethic, and uh, sticking to the idea that he had to become the best that he could. And uh, so between these five people work ethic, it would be the one thing for sure. Well, it clearly shows, I mean, with all the success that you have. Let's pivot. I appreciate a little bit. that. Yeah, let's pivot here a little bit. We talked about your life. Recently, you've been inducted to IBGJ Hall of Fame. I mean, that, that, that's, that's a, um, you know, an achievement of, of different level. Uh, being being a world champion, or let's even start lower, uh, winning a tournament is one thing. You know, becoming a, a local champion, that's another thing. Going to the 
international level of being the world champion, the, the best of the best of the best that you can be, that's another level. But now being recognized by arguably the largest jiu-jitsu organization there is, as you've done, you've made it, you know, unquestionable impact in the world, and we will recognize you in this very honorable, this very honorable way. What were your thoughts when you found out that this acknowledgement, you know, will be associated with your name? Yeah, no, that was a very cool and very special day. And, uh, I felt very happy when I got invited, and the uh, and the uh, like. Uh, uh, it, it's cool because I had a very successful jujitsu career, like winning the tournaments and that. So, and the and and I understand what you're saying with this impacts that you're creating with the communities and that. So, I felt like on both ways, you know, like I, I felt like a. I was recognized by my career and by the work that I'm providing today. So it was very, it was, it was a very fun day. And the, and the, but I tried to keep my ego low as well. Like I don't want to just keep repeating <laughs> anything I do. So it was <laughs> another day. Like, I, 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 I'm going to shake your ego, ego a little bit. What do you think was more satisfying winning the world championship or being recognized in the hall of fame? If I had to pick one, I would pick win. winning the World Championship. It's a feeling that I think only a few people will feel, like especially in the adult division, black belt, the professional, especially the open class. And the, I mean, like we we have a successful website nowadays, and the, we are doing very well financially. And the, I don't think there is any money in the world or any the, winning a World Championship. In, in adult black belt or ADCC or whatever it is, it is priceless, you know. There is no, uh, not that uh, being recognized in the Hall of Fame is not, but the the, the words you are being recognized at that moment, you know. Like you you work it all your life, you competed against like six guys, whatever, and you won, and you celebrate on that second, you know. Like you, it's, it's different than, they're like, getting a phone call that tells you and then you have that time to think and you're not expecting or, or maybe you were or whatever, but we need the tournament. There's so much that goes behind it that uh, when I won my first world title for now, I felt I took off a truck from my back because you know? I, I didn't know if I would ever win that in my life. You know? And then that happened in that second. You know? When the match ended, I was like, I made it. and It's different. You know, like, Talk a little bit about that day. You, your, your first world title. You go through your matches. You win. What's going through your mind right at the moment where your hand is about to get raised and you're about to get announced as the best of the best that year? Yeah, for, it's like a, it's, it's such an a experience, you know, like, uh, how can I explain? Like, uh, it's it's so hard to get there and, and everything has to go right in order for you to win. So there is some luck involved as well. Like you can't get hurt. Maybe there's one guy who always beats you that for some reason he lost. So everything has to go right. You know, like, and then when that happens, it's such a moment that it's, it's hard to describe even like, and the, do and, you, and I think like, do you understand what happens? Like do you, that moment do, that when, when your hand is about to raise, like, do you comprehend that this is taking place or you're still, you know, in that fog, you, you, it's still very kind of shaky. Yeah. So you are under adrenaline, right? right? So you're not relaxed yet. So it doesn't click right away, but it's such an emotional moment. And, and it's literally like you against you facing all your fears, you know? So and the and the so it's a it's a, that that's something that I miss in my life that it's never gonna come back and the and the, sometimes I dream that I have the tournament tomorrow and I'm ready and I'm excited. And, <laughs> you never and, know. Uh, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, <laughs> but know, listen, a, a lot of times we talk about the victory in the sense of listen, this is a great accomplishment, the sense of satisfaction. You know, you know. You know, we are the best of the best, and we get recognized for that. Very often, we don't talk about all the things that didn't go according to plan. We don't talk about the obstacles. Or we don't talk about the hard work. We're talking about the, the points of how many times we want to quit 
and yet we made it there at the end, right? Like sure. we, we, we see the result when we get there, but we never see the results ahead of time. Talk about yeah. some of those very difficult moments. What was the hardest thing when you were that first world championship? You're climbing up there. You're training. You, you're doing everything you got to do the whole year long. What's the, one of the hardest things that you had to overcome to get there? Yeah, so I think it's the entire journey, you know, because like, as you said, there are so many moments that you think about giving up. So, for example, when I was in the hospital that I had that thing that I had to stay three months to all of jiu-jitsu, then I, I, all my family, I guess, it, and that was the time that my dad started becoming uh, my favorite, right? But that time I thought about giving up, like, uh, I, like I thought about not coming back to jiu-jitsu. You know? I was like, I'm going to finish the surgery, I'm gonna stay three months off, and my life is going to continue, and I might never do this thing again. Then one year later, uh, I didn't tap in one arm bar, and my elbow dislocated with my dad watching. <laughs> and I had to go to the hospital, and, and then it was another time. I was still brown, but I was living in Brazil, and never made one dollar from that jiu-jitsu thing. <laughs> And uh, I'm finishing my college, my last year of college. I was in the hospital. With, if I would lift my arm, my forearm would fall. So I had someone carry my arm into the hospital. And I was screaming, banging. And so that was another time. That I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> That's the time. Let me give up. And, uh, but there was always something in the back of my mind saying no. You know? And uh, I read something the other day saying like that. Uh, uh, for the for the small decisions of your life, you try to be rational. But for the very biggest decisions of your life, it's your instinct. You know, like it's it's your it's your feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, like so for example, who are you gonna marry? Don't be rational. You know, like don't, don't you're gonna feel what you don't don't try yeah. to be rational. Yeah. Like uh, calculating things. Like try to. Follow your feelings, you know, like yeah. and the, giving up jujitsu was probably a rational thing to do at that time. Like, you know, like I had other career super so I was getting injured after there was always every year some shit happening, like go to the hospital, surgery, a pen size, next year, my elbow dislocated. But something was like telling me, like, you cannot give up right now. You know, like you went too far to give up. Like. And I, at that time, I had won the World's Open class as a purple belt, got second in the world as a brown belt. I'm like, you know, all of these are not going to give up. Like, <laughs> so there was something telling me like, to not give up, you know? Like, so, so I think, like, kind of like following the, the, the not trying to rationalize the situation, because many times when things are going really bad, I think if you try, to rationalize and not following your instinct, the answer is to give up. You know, like, yeah, move on. And, uh, and, uh, but if you follow what you're really feeling, at the end of the day, we are all people, right? So we have feelings and uh, we have emotional aspects of it and uh, that kind of stuff. Do you think that's one of the reasons why people give up and quit jiu-jitsu? I think it could be because they start putting the paper, you know, wait a second. Is it a professional sport? Yes or no? It's becoming now, but it's still no. Mm -hmm. uh, can I make a better living doing college about this? Yes or no? Yes. How much? How risky is this? Can I get hurt down the road and not be able to compete? Yes. Uh, the, and then, but 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 they love jujitsu. They forget yeah. about that. You know, yeah. they love it. They will do that thing much better than anything else. Yeah. You know, because like, they love it. Because they would do every day, every time. They would talk about it. They would read about it. They would train the weekends. They would train the holidays. But then they forget about it. You know? And then they do another job that they do Monday to Friday, this time to that time, and you know. Yeah. You talk. Go ahead. Well, you talked a minute ago about um, when you did win that it was like a truck being lifted off of you, and then a, a sentence later or so, you said that something about fear. And was the was that what was that truck? Was it fear? Was it doubt? Um, was it just the, the the year leading up to it? No, I mean like that. Yeah, I mean that uh, when you like everybody has fears, right? So when you are doing jujitsu and you're going to compete, you're facing fears, like and the and the especially like if you dedicated your life to it, and the, and you're facing it. You know, you're not like 
you were not like not going to the tournament because you were afraid. You were not. You didn't decide to do other things in life because you were if you were afraid that jujitsu could work out. So you were you were kind of like putting all the cards on the table and betting on it. You know, like, and, uh, but you were betting on, on yourself, you know, like so. So you know, it's hard work. A lot of hard work, yeah. right? I mean, it, that, that's what it boils down to. D- listen, it, d- we talked about a lot of competition injuries and all that, and that, that kind of leads me into the old guys, right? Like, I think <laughs> we all we, we we all get, you know, a little older and age and all that, and you're on your way there, too. I mean, you, you're a young stud in, in this trio, but, um, you know, like, do you think jiu-jitsu is for the old guys? Do you, do you think that the, 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 the older guys can actually train and be, you know, pretty efficient effective you know and continue loving this thing i i, I truly believe it. and uh, i think it's in my opinion it's also important to consider that there is some mileage involved in it as well you know? so it's not only the age so you know mm-hmm. i'm pretty young i'm 35 years old but my mileage is pretty bad so i have a ton of old injuries that sometimes when i train a little bit more than i should i'm injured but it's not because jiu-jitsu hurt me it's because my mileage is beat up, you know. Like yeah. My neck hurts. So if I'm doing too much over under press and someone pushed my neck next day. But if I had started jiu-jitsu today, I wouldn't have that injury. And then I would be much easier, you know. Like so so I truly believe that you can start jiu-jitsu at any age. And uh, uh and, and it's gonna be very fun. And I make mean, almost sense that if you start at 60 years old, be careful, you know, like you're you're 60, you're not like 30. But uh, but doesn't require you starting when you are ten, fifteen. I think the 20. beautiful. I think the beautiful part about jujitsu that it can be adapted. It can it can change depending on who you are, how old you are, how old you train. And again, we we always got to keep in mind that you don't have to be you. Not everybody's going to be a world champion. You don't have to train twice a week for seven days no, every single day. You know, you can really enjoy it. You know, three times a week. Like, yeah, it, I think that, you that's the important part. You don't even have to be the best in the room. If you if you're starting a little later in life, you ju- you're just trying to be the best that you could be, and it doesn't matter who's in the room with you. Um, you just need to keep moving forward for yourself, right? Be- yeah. Better than you were yesterday, one percent better every day, all that stuff. So yeah, that, that's what, what I love about what's it. What's your perspective on this? Because you started I'm old. You, well, you you older, okay? You you're still good looking, but you well, older. That'll never change. Okay? <laughs> okay. I'm just getting yeah. more distinguished. When you started, Gary? Uh, yeah, when I started, you started when I was 47. So, so yeah, and uh, so what's my perspective on yeah. what? On but starting starting jiu-jitsu older, older, yeah, definitely. You know, you got to realize you got to leave that. You know, they talk about the ego all the time in jiu-jitsu. You do have to leave your ego outside. You're not gonna be better, or I shouldn't say better. You're not gonna get the best of the 25 year old college wrestler. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. That makes sense. You know, that makes sense. And and it, but so you. I think you come to these realizations as you get older, regardless if you're in jujitsu or not, whether you do any sport, you realize that, okay, I can't do what I used to do at the same level. And I think once you accept that, um, it can be a lot more rewarding and, and joyful. Even last night is a good example. We were just lay down, everybody stand in line, boom, boom, boom. You know, <laughs> one right after the other is, sure thing. is sitting on, is getting Mount. You're starting on bottom. Uh, and, Tim and I were the oldest two guys in the room, and when he came over to mount me, we just started laughing. <laughs> High five each other, let's go! You know, um, you can you can find joy in it if you put that ego aside and realize that you're only trying to be better than you previously were. Bernardo, do you think that jujitsu changed for you as your mileage has increased? Nowadays, I train way less than I used to right now. So nowadays, nowadays I'm training like twice a week type of thing. And uh, sometimes even last, I, I try to not miss one week because you know, I don't want to. Uh, I try to go at least at least once a week, and that's the advice I give to every jiu-jitsu student. Like, try to not quit because the time that things get bad in jiu-jitsu is when you quit and come back. You know, you forget everything. Now your ego is on the way. You're getting your ass kicked by that guy who you used to train well. You got out of shape. And then you're going to start all crazy excited and end up getting hurt. If you train once a week, it's like 10 times better than skipping three months. You know? So, so I'm being the proof of my, of what I say nowadays. I train like 
almost twice a week. But I try to keep my body active as well and do other stuff, either run or lift or, or, but, but that, that changes a lot. Like I train a lot in my life, like two, three times per day. And nowadays I train like twice a week. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I think because I train so much earlier, I don't have that motivation anymore to wake up every single day and go to the gym and train. I like to give myself some window, you know, like I go on Monday, I come back on Thursday, go on Wednesday, go Saturday, that kind of stuff. And I think training, the way how we train has changed too. Like I remember, yeah. you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, like when I was starting 20 years ago, like it, the training was very different. Oh, Lord. It was like, you know, you were survival mode. Every, like it was, it was yeah. grinding. You know, today yeah. I think we have some intelligence behind it. And we can select when we do conditioning, when we do mecha mechanical, when, you, when, you, oh. when we do drilling and other things. Like it, 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 we can really improve much faster. Yeah, and another thing I would say as well is, if, you know, uh, maybe I'm training also twice a week, but I'm on the mats almost every day because you saw like you came here. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm spending time on the mat. So uh, I, I'm just not on the mat two or three times per day, which ends up sacrificing with the, the time that I would probably be training. But, uh, but, uh, but I'm involved with Jiu Jitsu like every single day on, on doing techniques with people when they come over, as you did. And uh, that kind of stuff. You know? do, do you think that's actually helping the jiu-jitsu? There is an argument out there. You know, some, some say that being on the mat is not training or watching videos is not training or having a oh. jiu-jitsu conversation. That's not training. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I, 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 my opinion, I could be wrong, but I disagree because when I used to be an athlete, I would go to the gym. Even when I was injured, you know, and, oh, I hurt my knee. I cannot train jujitsu. I would go there, sit and watch. And you're learning, you know, like you're involved with, you know, like the same thing. Like, I think there are several ways to learn. You can learn by practicing. You can learn by reading. You can learn by listening. You can learn by watching. You can learn by asking questions. For example, I can, let's imagine I'm fighting against, I don't know, I guess a very tough opponent, Rodolfo Vieira. And I can ask someone, what should I do in order to stop that move? And maybe that can help me tremendously, as it has happened sometimes. One time I came back from one of these tournaments, and Fabio told me, like, hey, don't do this grip, do that grip. He didn't teach me. He told me. He talked to me. So I learned by listening. And then I practiced. So I, I think, like, any way you can use to acquire jiu-jitsu, you're learning jiu-jitsu. And, uh, and, and there are several ways, you know, it can be by asking questions, by doing privates, by taking regular class, by training, by watching videos, by listening, by, and the list goes on and on and on. The knowledge overall, not only jiu-jitsu, any type of, you want to learn about, anything about investments you can read you can listen you can ask you can practice you can do stuff and test if it was a good idea or a bad idea and et cetera, et cetera. well i feel like sometimes this topic is very misunderstood i think often sometimes not often but sometimes students think that training and learning are the same thing and they are really not like training, I would okay. consider something being very physical, that we are on the mat, we are practicing, we are hands-on. But learning is more of an education. This is studying. And we can do that yeah. in a number of different ways. And today, like, I mean, we talk about with Gary this mm -hmm. all the time. Like, literally, all jiu-jitsu, all of the jiu-jitsu is on my phone. All of it. There is no secrets anymore. Like, you can, you can literally pull anything up, you know, from anywhere, and you can learn it. But it, it, it is... You know, so it's accessible and often underestimated how much power we have, how accessible jiu-jitsu is today. No, I agree. And the, and the, for example, when I started jiu-jitsu, there was no YouTube. Oh, I know. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. There, so, there were like two books. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, and, uh, Gracie Magazine. That, that's all it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and it was a way to learn. You, you could yeah. go to the page and see the yeah. move, you know, yeah. like, uh, yeah. you were reading, you know, like, and, uh, and yeah, we just, some yeah. promotion. 
and make some promotional here nowadays to have BCJ fanatics. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. The best way yeah. to learn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> no. Absolutely. We just had uh, Luca Tala on, the, on 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 this podcast, and he was talking about Gracie Magazine, how it was way back in the day, and and it's like it was the yeah. only source of information there was. And today we are, this is not it. This it's everywhere. Yeah. It's all the way, yeah. including Bernardo. Did you notice how that he has a BJJ fanatics T-shirt? That's he's a trying, nice He's trying shirt. to suck it up to you. That's a nice he's, shirt. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I claim. He's in there as well, so I wonder. Uh, I claimed I didn't wear it today. It was a coincidence. It was just a coincidence, but it's not. It was calculated. <laughs> I, I would believe it if it was. Yeah. <laughs> Bernardo, I, we, we know that you are tight on time. So before we start wrapping this up, one of the things that we do end of every episode is guest who was before you, the episode before you, asked a question. This is going to be actually fun. I think. Yeah, this is a funny one. First of all, you know the guest, and we'll tell you in a moment. But we'll ask you to answer the question, um, and we'll just kind of carry on from there. This is yeah. going to be interesting. Gary's going to take a lead on that. This is a silly one, but it's fun. Uh, so Terry Kopstock was just on, and uh, he his question to you is, as a fighter, would you rather not have legs or not have arms? That's a tough question. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, no, that's an okay question. I would rather not have legs. And okay. I'm knocking the wood here in some time. <laughs> yeah, that, so but, why? No, elaborate, I, I, elaborate on that. Why? I think the face is very important, right? Like, uh, if, if you get punched in the face, it's a big deal, right? You can go on. I think the, everything starts in the brain, right? Like, we, we need knowledge. Right? We, we need our brain in order to operate. And I think the arms protect the face. And the, that was just like a 10 seconds spot I but, had here. But your, <laughs> your, your, guard would get, my your guard would get passed all the time. Yes, I know. Like, you can kind yeah, of you, build, you can frame. Play some frame and, right. Yeah, you can um, frame. You can, I, I, are you, if you're talking strictly jujitsu, uh, yeah. And I mean, you, I think uh, your attacks are limited if you only have legs. I right? don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No right. idea. So I, I, I never so want to find I, out. So now I have the question to the next guest. Hold oh, on. Don't, don't say, say it. that. We'll, don't get say it. That. we'll get it after you. We'll get it after the show. Don't we say don't it right now. Okay. We want it to okay. be a surprise. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 A surprise. Hold on. Don't uh, wait, wait on that. Fun. Wait on that. <laughs> <laughs> wait on that. But that was, that was actually interesting. Interesting. Listen, Bernardo, so what's next Next in store for you? What, what are you doing? You you know you're traveling a lot. You just had uh, – you're recovering from your surgery. How, how is that going? Are you are you healthy? You you back operationally? Everything is good? Yeah, so uh, I, I took a bunch of like uh, bone fragments. Yeah, that was, I saw the picture. That, that was yeah. gross. It was scary. <laughs> yeah. uh, they were inside my also. I had three problems on my elbow. And I'm, I'm explaining here because a lot of people wrote to me and I even made a YouTube video. So maybe they had the same issue. So I had three problems on my elbow. Like one, when I would bend my elbow, looks like my elbow would explode. So that was one problem. And then I would only be able to bend my elbow until here or so. But that's, that was one problem. Problem number two, many times my elbow would lock it up. Like it would get completely locked, and I had to shake and massage in order to make it come back. And problem number three, my arm would not stretch completely. So the problem one and two are solved. Like now I can bend completely, and it's fine. It's not getting locked anymore. Just the stretching part that's taking a little longer to recover. And uh, I'm having to do a bunch of like uh, physiotherapists at home that they, they gave me. That is literally like I'm boring myself, kind of. You know? I have to stretch my arm <laughs> over the limit to make sure that it's kind of stick at 180 degrees. So it was a very successful surgery, and uh, I'm very happy with it. And uh, it's being a relief. So, uh, but no, no, like, no additional surgeries are needed, right? I don't think so. And uh, the doctor was up front that sometimes it doesn't get 100% perfect, but as long as we get like the 90 highs, it's it's fine. And uh, so I'm, I would say I'm probably 95 now, 97, 98. So it, it was a very successful surgery and I'm very happy with it. And uh, so I'm already training again. So that's, that's all good. Good for you. Wonderful. That's ph phenomenal. Cool. Listen, what's next for BJJ Fanatics? I mean, it, it's unquestionable that, you know, you guys became, you know, the largest, most accessible, most successful, the most known platform for jujitsu content. What what's next? I mean, are you guys take, taking to oh. this next level? Come on, share some secrets here. Throw 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 a bone here. Let, uh, no, I can, I can share. So uh, <laughs> I think our mission with BGJ Fanatics 
is to literally like serve the jiu-jitsu community, right? I think that's what we do the best. So for example, the way we're serving nowadays, it's with instructional videos, and then we are pretty much serving the instructors and serving the students, right? So we're like uh, thinking about more ways to serve this community that we can add value to the community. You know? So uh, we might be building a merchandise website as well that we sell merchandise. And uh, we're thinking about a lot of ideas around this. How can we serve this community even better? You know, like, and what can we do to, to help the community and, uh, and that kind of stuff? So that's the thinking. Well, def- you def- you guys definitely have made a huge impact. I mean, I think many have tried before you, but you know, you guys are definitely you know on the top of the food chain at this point of time, and such a fast and 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 large growth, and and you know, a phenomenal to be part of it. So it's great to have you on on the show, sharing some of the some of the stories and thoughts and wisdom. And there's so much, so much, so much of that, Gary. Yeah, I just um, I, I've dropped a lot on that site and uh, it's, <laughs> it's been all beneficial uh all beneficial I, I love that it's um i mean you can just find anything right anything you're working on anything you yep. need anything you're interested in um uh, and it goes back to you i think um before it even started like i said being an ambassador and i think it's just pushing things forward it's wonderful i love it do you remember <laughs> before you go do you remember the day when bjj fanatics idea has started like, do you remember the day one where it was like, we oh. should this, will this work? Yeah, so we started everything with a different website. It was called BGJ Super Deals. Right. So, and so, so you can almost split this in, in, in two ideas. So that was one idea. Let's create this website. It's going to be BGJ Super Deals and let's sell the instructors that we had at that time that Michael had done even before I joined, had done like three or four. And we started that way. And then in, 2016, we came out with the idea to create this brand. You know, like wait, wait a second, we have these instructional videos here in different pages. Why don't you why don't you put everything together and create this little marketplace here for the community? And that was 2016, but I don't remember the exact day. I do remember the day we sold the first instructional video. I don't remember who was that to be honest. But the day we saw the first instructional, the first DVD, say at that time it was DVD, mm-hmm. in the other yeah. website was November 10, 2014. So that, was the, <laughs> that was the first time we sold anything. It that was, I sold anything, right? Because Michael had done some DVDs before that. And what, what was your thought on that? The first DVD sales uh, and you thinking what? Yeah. What happened was, let me just share this story here very quick and then we wrap it up. So, uh, we, Michael and I became friends in 2014. And Michael is a very entrepreneurial type of person. And uh, we quickly became like great friends. And he would call me almost every day to ask half good questions. And I would call him to tell him about the entrepreneurial stuff that I was doing that he had advised me. And those stuff, those stuff were like, he, he found me because he watched one YouTube video. And he didn't know who, who I was. Like, he just watched a YouTube video and this guy was playing halfware and using over under pass. And he was like, man, that's an A-star research. So he was pitching me this idea like, man, you should be everywhere in the internet. If, if, you, were, if you had a YouTube channel, if you had an Instagram, if you had this, if you had that, a lot more people know who you are. And you can pay to get that. You can do paid traffic and run Facebook ads and that. And he didn't even know how to do that at that time. He just knew that that was possible. And he had other business in his life that that uh, that uh, that he would hire people to do that and then i started studying that i started like let me learn about it let me that's interesting and then i when we would talk on the phone i would explain to him hey i did this and i got this amount of followers i did that and i got this amount of this and the, and, and then he started asking me the right questions you know he was like uh and how are we monetizing on it i was like Oh, that's a good question. And then I was like, <laughs> I think I'm getting, I might get more seminars doing this. And then he was like, so, so try to run this for, for a seminar. And then I tried, and then I got like a few seminar, a couple seminars because I run an ad on Facebook, something like that. And then he was like, how much you spend on this ad? And I was like, oh, I don't know, $50. 
And how much is your seminar again? I was like, oh, it's two or three thousand dollars. So he was like, you spent fifty dollars and you made four to five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so he he was persu- persuading me this idea of learning more about that. Like, so at some point, he was like, Bernard, let's do something here. That's the time we kind of started working together. He was like, I'm gonna. That's that's a funny story. That's why I extended your view here. So I'm gonna send you a one thousand dollars check to your house. You take that check and spend it on Facebook. Write down everything that happened. Do this thing you're doing there. You might be doing it right. And tell me everything that happened. And in my mind, I was like, this guy is crazy. He's sending money to my house (laughs) (laughs) to to run my little laboratory over here. (laughs) And then I I did that. And then I got more seminars. I got a ton of followers on my Facebook page. I got this. I got that. And at that time, Facebook was almost like a little gold mine. You know, like yeah. you run Facebook yeah. ads, you get returns. It's not like that anymore. So then Michael came out with the first idea, the, the first website. He was like, man, let's create a website. Let's sell this stuff here. And you do this thing you're doing there. Like, I, I, I trust you. This, this might not work. Like, keep doing what you're doing. And then we built the website. And then November 10, I remember that. I, I put $100 on ads and we made 400 Nice. So I was like, I, made, I put 100 and made 400. So I was like, I'm rich tomorrow. I'm going to put 1000 dollars <laughs> I'm going to make 4000 Next day, I'm going to put $10,000. But that's not how Facebook works either. You know? That was a long like journey to understand Facebook and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I dived really, really, really deep on it. And, uh, but but uh, that's how it started, kind of, you know, like, and then next day we spent, they then started losing money in the ads. It wasn't a mess, but, but, uh, <laughs> but that's kind of how it started. So, <laughs> well, that's, that's a great story. That's yeah, that's awesome. We got to get Michael on the show and get, get yeah, his perspective yeah. on this journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was fun. Yeah. Listen, Bernardo, I know you t- you tied on time. Um, let's wrap this up for today. Uh, we, we do appreciate I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your time. Um, you know, I appreciate everything that you do. Um, I look forward to seeing what BJJ Fanatics and you personally um, continue doing for Jiu-Jitsu community. Without people like you, you know, Jiu-Jitsu would not be what it is today. So all. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much yeah. for doing this. We appreciate your time. And, and uh, I... Again, thank you so much for, for just how you represent jiu-jitsu. Um, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. So, thanks so much, uh, Thomas. Thanks, Gary. It was a pleasure to be here. You guys had great questions. You guys made it very fun. Great. And uh, yeah, hope right. to be back again someday. All we'll right. We love it. Peace. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care.